Okay, I think that's everybody. All right. So we left off last time with this slide, and we kind of left in a hurry because we got this great. But a quick reminder: we left off with the um, atomic theory, where Rutherford's model we had a centrally located nucleus that was positively charged, dense, and the electrons were outside, and that's it. That's all I said about it. I didn't give any details about the electrons other than you know what Thompson had already described with their negative things like that. So four was our first step into uh, <coughs> model the atoms that we understand today. And so we're gonna look at this a little bit closer and we'll look at the photoelectric effect and see how that works. So a couple of terms. That you probably want to record when the electron. If this is a hydrogen atom. Hydrogen only has one electron, and Bohr used the hydrogen atom to describe his model and develop the model because it's simple. You only have one proton. You only have one electron, and Bohr used the spectrums. That we looked at last time in class to help give a description of what's going on. So he first off said that the electron, the one electron in hydrogen, should be in the first energy level. And that's what we call the ground state. So the ground state is when an electron is in the lowest energy state that it can be. Okay. Now, Rob Miner, you guys on online, if you've got a question, just pop in and interrupt me. Okay. I have no problem with that. Same with you guys. Okay. <coughs> so we've got the electron in the ground state. And what Bohr said is that the electron can absorb energy and go to a higher energy state if it's a very specific amount of energy. So in this little video here, it shows you've got the, the, the photon coming in, hitting the electron, and making it bump out to the second energy level. Now, it wasn't just, again, you said it, it had to be a very specific amount of energy. It couldn't just be any random amount. And the amount of energy that that electron absorbed was equal to the distance or the difference, I should say, in the energy that the electron would have in the ground state and in the second energy level, which we would call the excited state. So hydrogen with only one electron wants to be, that electron wants to be in the first energy level. That's the lowest energy state or ground state. If the electron is in a higher energy level, then that means it's in an excited state. <clears throat> Electrons don't stay in the excited state for long. How soon do they come back? Most of the time, fairly soon. It's kind of random. <clears throat> but to do that, that electron's going to have to give off energy. And the energy that it gives off is equal to the amount of energy it gained in the first place, or equal to the difference in energy between these two energy levels. So last time in class, oops, we looked at these, okay? It's period nine, you guys were in the class, I pulled the thing out, you guys were able to see the glowing tube. Big black box. Like, did it in class. No. Oh, it's my it's my ninth period uh, um, B day because they got an extra long class. So, if we were to look at the light that would be given off by helium or hydrogen, sorry, hydrogen, we would see that hydrogen will only give off these four colors of light. 
Now it's hard to see on the screen, but on your slide, you can see those fairly easy, right? You got a reddish color, you got a turquoise color, then it's got a blue and you got a violet. Okay. <coughs> those are the four different colors that we can see that hydrogen gives off as a spectrum. Now, the reason why is because if we can pump energy into this atom and cause that electron to jump up to higher energy levels, when it comes back down, it will give off light, very specific colors of light. And here's Bohr's model's description and what energy changes are taking place. So in this diagram here, we see that we've got the energy levels. There are six of them represented. It looks like seven, but this is this is the edge of the atom. And technically there's an infinite number of energy levels, but we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. This one is not labeled as a six. The ground state of which is the first energy level. But all of these shells, if you wish, or energy levels are available for the hydrogen, the hydrogen's electron to go to. If it is in any one of them, though, it's in the excited state. So I could take an electron from the first energy level and send it up to the fourth energy level. If I give it enough energy. And then it can drop back down from the fourth energy level to the first energy level, and in the process, give off light with a specific color. Problem is, we wouldn't be able to see it because it's outside of our visible spectrum. So I'm going to zoom in here. You don't have this slide. That's okay. But what I did is I, I took the colors that you get in the spectrum and lined them up and matched them up with what we see in the hydrogen atom, and they're called the Balmer series. Named after the scientists who describe them. And what we see here is that the energy change between the second or the third and the second energy level. I mean, hey, would Mr. K too go down the first? It could. It's kind of like dropping a ball downstairs. I mean, if you just roll a ball down the stairs, it could hit the stairs pretty randomly, right? It's not going to go from the top step all the way down to the bottom. It's going to hit some on the way down. So if I have an electron in the third energy level of hydrogen, it's in the excited state. It wants to get down to the first energy level, but it can stop along the way at the second. Give off red light, and then drop down from the second to the first energy level and give off a different color of light. Now, the reason why I picked these is because they're the ones that are visible. So this is what you would see as a spectrum for hydrogen. Why is this the red one? Is it because it's releasing the lowest amount of energy? And why is it releasing the lowest amount of energy? Because it's on the, it's closest to the second one, the one that's going to. Your drop in energy is not that great. And if you remember from our discussion dealing with wavelength, energy, and frequency, if it's a low energy, it's going to be red to us. That's why this one's violet. Violet light has more energy than red does. So going from an electron, going from this sixth energy level down to the second, it's the largest energy change of these four. Red's the lowest energy, violet's the highest energy. You know Roy G. Bitt, right? You guys learned that like back in kindergarten or something like that. Okay, 
So red, low energy, we go up in energy. Red, orange, yellow, green, somewhere in the middle, blue, and violet. Violet's the highest energy light that we can see. What's beyond violet? Ultraviolet. You can't see it, but you can feel the effects of it. Infrared, same thing. You've got red and infrared. Red's like heat. So if you're standing in front of an oven and it feels warm, you're getting infrared radiation heat. You can't see that. But I'm sure you guys have seen thermal cameras, right? That's a false image. It's not, it, it, it's, it's putting color that you can see to something that is you can't. Yeah. Is that why certain colors of fire is hotter? Yes. So when we talk, when we say something is red hot, that has to do with the temperature and the amount of energy being released by the atom of vibrating. As you raise the temperature, the color of that, that material, and usually I'm talking about a solid now. Okay, so we gotta be careful about that. Right. So red's gonna be that'll be a high temperature, but red, and as you increase the temperature, it's gonna work its way up to through the spectrum. And what you end up getting is a bluer tint, and eventually you get to what what someone would call white hot. But that's because you've got not just red, but you've got all the other colors mixing together to get it white. But if something's white hot, that's really stinking hot. Okay, but that's that's why you get different colors uh, for a solid. Now, flames is a different story because there we're dealing with gases, and that's more along the lines of these. Okay, so like fireworks, you get a red color versus a yellow color, versus a blue color, something like that. That has to do with the electrons transition. Not necessarily what the temperature of the, of the firework is. But if you're talking about a solid object, if a solid object is glowing red, first of all, don't touch it, okay? But it's gonna be hot. That's your, like uh, uh, the filaments in your oven. Like if you have an electric oven. Or you stick a poker in the flame, you pull it out and it's red hot. But you could raise the temperature even higher, and that color would shift because of that temperature. It's a slight, it's a different phenomenon, but it's it's in the same ballpark. Okay. <coughs> now, uh, I know you guys don't have this, but if I have a photon. And a photon is a particle of light. If this photon comes into the electron on the second energy level, if it has the right amount of energy, that electron can absorb it and pop up to the next energy level. The reason I changed the color on this is because now it's excited. And it's going to stay there until it releases the exact same amount of energy. And comes back into the ground state. I had this calculated as an energy of 3.03 times 10 negative 19 coulombs. Its wavelength is 656, so a long wavelength. That's going to be a reddish color. And if I've got a photon, in this case, Violet, if it has enough energy, it's going to pop it up to the sixth energy level. Yeah, six energy. And it's going to stay there until it releases energy. And I have it coming down to the second, but it could come down stepwise. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? Is that Alan? Does Alan have his hand up for a question? Or... Right. It'll be a mystery to us. That one had an energy of 4.85 times 10 negative 19, so higher in energy, <coughs> but also had a shorter wave. 
questions. All right, we're laying groundwork. We're going to build off of this. So get out the notes uh, for the photoelectric effect. That'd be the part two. You guys online switching over to the document I told you guys to download and have ready for today. Give you a second to pull that up. All right. So I had you guys look at the photoelectric effect. Does anybody have any questions about that assignment that I had you do? Just basically just go through and run that simulation, answer some relatively simple questions about stuff. People online, you guys have any questions before I move on with that? Because I'm assuming you have done. It. Okay. Silence. Yes. Um, I might have done something wrong, but I can, whenever I click the link, I don't know how to use it. So go into Drive. Is it linked incorrectly? Okay. Go into Drive. Because all of the, all the notes in there, and I probably won't link them in Canvas anymore because it's just going to get unwieldy. So all the slides you're going to have are in that uh, Unit 2 folder. So if you guys online were having trouble, then that's go to the drive and get the uh, second one. The one that's dealing with the is it title photoelectric. Uh, to have it in there? Okay. Yeah. Finally. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it'll seem like you're in unit one forever. <coughs> okay, so the photoelectric effect is something that you guys use every day. You don't realize it. It's one of those things that becomes, it's become uh, just built into so much of what you use and what's around you. So the photoelectric effect is when electrons get ejected from atoms or molecules. We're going to focus on atoms. But the idea is basically the same. Light comes in, hits the, hits the material, and causes electrons to be kicked out. Okay, So they become ions. Now, it had been known to occur for quite some time, middle 1800s. I mean, the observation was made. But like many things in science, uh, an observation gets made, scientist goes, hmm, that's interesting. And then they kind of move on or try to figure it out. But when they don't have the knowledge yet, it's hard to figure out. So it just becomes like a novelty. Okay. So in the early 1900s, things started to shift really quickly. Um, this is when we talk about spectrums. And we can see that electrons being uh, hopping up and down in energy levels within an atom. So we got a better understanding of that. We've got Bohr around this time in the early 1900s explaining it. it's because the electrons are gaining energy and jumping up to higher energy levels, or if you add enough energy, you kick the electron out. So it leaves the atom completely. But there was a problem. Physicists were still stuck in what we would call classical physics. This is Newton, Galileo, particles like you know, powdered balls and cannonballs and, and stuff move through the air. Now, at one time, they thought a cannonball did this. 
shoot a cannon. And he goes like that. It was moving too fast. He couldn't see it. We know now that a cannonball is going to go like this. I don't know, it seems funny, but it's like the cartoons. Go off the cliff and you just drop. No, that's not how it works. <laughs> you're going down. <laughs> Immediately after you step off the cliff, you're going down. So, <clears throat> one of the things the scientists thought that they understood was that if you eject electrons, then the brightness of the light should have an effect on the energy of the electrons. And that's not the case. So, it depends on the intensity or brightness of light. What determines the amount of energy light has? You guys online, you're welcome to answer questions. The wavelength, the color does. Okay? So, we know that the color, wavelength, frequency, those all are related and they tell us how much energy the light is going to have. So what is this intensity? What's the brightness? If I do this, as slow as it goes. What have I done? I dim the lights. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> I dim the lights. But what does that mean? What did I do? What did I change? You're on the right track. I reduced something. The number of photons. Did I change the color of the light? No, I mean, you may think it changed color, but I didn't change the color of these. I just have less light. For those of you, I don't know if you guys can tell, I dimmed the lights, okay? I'm talking about these, these guys online. I, I keep forgetting they're there, but they're there. <laughs> so I dimmed the lights. I made less photons. That's where you're kind of thinking about with the atoms and the molecules. Yeah. So, but we didn't change the number of atoms and molecules in light, but what we did do is change how many of them are giving off photons. Okay? <clears throat> now, that's what they didn't understand. They didn't understand that the brightness wasn't the energy. The brightness was just how many photons you have. Because at this time, they're not thinking photons. They're thinking a wave only. And if you go out into the ocean and you think about the waves in an ocean, a big wave has a lot of energy, right? And a small wave has a little bit of energy. And they're thinking more along the classical physics where the brightness was the energy, but that's not it. Okay? <coughs> Uh, now, so it's the number of photons that are affecting this. Was that? I thought something messed up. Oh, well, those didn't come back up, or did they come back up and go down? Oh, okay, hold on. All right. They knew that energy had some energy was a factor, but they had they weren't able to separate from the intensity until Einstein came. Right? So Einstein gave them the reason why, and this is this comes along. Uh, Einstein, a member of the Planck's class that we used. Really teeny tiny number that we used when we were calculating energy. Max Planck, 
he had some explanations and Einstein kind of pulled everything together and gave an explanation for what the photoelectric effect is. I'm going to skip to this slide here and it's just like the simulation. He said photons of light, particles of light, they hit the material and for each photon that interacts with one electron, you kick out an electron. So if we treat light as a particle, we got an explanation. Now we know, and I don't know what the physics people think here is, we know that light has properties of both. It's a particle and it also acts as a wave. We talk about wavelength, right? But it also acts as a particle. In this case, it's acting as a particle. It interacts with the electron just like two balls collide. Except in this case, the photon gets literally absorbed because it's just energy into the electron, and the energy becomes more energetic. Now, I mentioned that this is something that you guys use all the time. <laughs> so, you guys at home, follow along if you can on this. I, I can show you how you can uh, turn off the lights or make it dark on your iPad here in just a second. So, <clears throat> on your iPads, actually do this first. Uh, put the brightness, change your brightness to about maybe a third, a little less than half. Okay. For those of you who like it really bright, you can change it. Now, go into your iPad settings, find accessibility, then display and tap size. And then scroll all the way to the bottom to where it says auto brightness and make sure that's on. I was hit and miss during my period two, uh, period six class this morning whether this worked. So <coughs> if it doesn't work, then I'll have to show you on my iPad because I know it does. <coughs> um, now, get to this menu. And you flip down from the upper right, right? Okay. Now, just leave it there. Don't adjust the brightness or anything like that. Just leave it there. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the lights. For those of you at home, if you want to participate with this, on your iPad, so I'm on your iPad. This side here is the home button. Up here, you've got your camera. So if you can see the camera, you're good. Now, your case, you've got an I, a school iPad. You don't have a, a thing over the bezel. So find where that camera is and put your thumb over the whole area like that to cover it up. But for you guys, I'm going to turn off the lights. Okay. Now, watch that. Watch the bar, the brightness bar on your iPads when I turn off the lights. Okay. Just stare at it. Anything? No? All right, let me turn them on. You doing anything? Are you serious? <laughs> What's that? Yeah, we're on phone. You get your phone. <laughs> Why won't it work on your on your iPad? Who's got their own iPad? Anyway, did it work on yours? Yeah, that's probably better. all the way Maybe. Oh, I 
should have turned that off, dang it. Mine's going up and down all the time right now. It will definitely. Yeah, start it. Yeah, your phone's in here. Where's Bear outside? I mean, his lights aren't the brightest in the world. I guess we couldn't break it up. That doesn't sound right. Like all right. good? Okay. But I just need to, all right, so turn them off. I'm going to turn them off. Maybe you can see. I just didn't have the lights on. Go down. Uh, okay, so I have to turn my bright my lights on pretty bright. Okay. All right. So when you guys did the simulation, you saw that. You saw that if you make it brighter, you have more photons come over, it hits more of the it ejects more electrons. And the electrons start to migrate this way. Okay. Now the important thing here that we will pick up with next time in class is this equation. It's nothing. It's nothing. So the energy of the photon. How much energy does the photon have? Will that be provided to us? Maybe. Are we going to have to figure it out? Are we going to take one out of the room to figure out what it is? Why not? Oh, uh, welcome to chemistry math. Yeah, yeah, math chemistry, chemistry is another math class, by the way. I don't know if you guys are told that. <laughs> so, photon, energy or photon is going to equal the ionization energy. This is the energy required to remove the electron. Okay, so if you want to kick an electron out of an atom, it's got to absorb energy. And then kinetic energy. When it comes out, it's going to be moving. How much kinetic energy does it have? <coughs> so if I have an atom, and I got an electron, and I want to kick that electron out. I'm going to have to put energy into it. So I have a photon. That photon hits the electron. Okay. Now, let's say the photon, the energy of the photon equal to 20. Do I need to write bigger for you guys at home? Somebody answer. It's good. Oh, Luke. I think they just turned the monitor off. Probably. You guys are terrible. It's All good. Right, wait a minute. Somebody's going to answer this. Who is that? Aiden. Alan? Aiden. No, Aiden. Yes, see, it's too far away. It's Aiden. No, I would never give this to Alan. <laughs> hey, Aiden. Okay, Aiden. Aiden, yep. you got an answer to that? You guys yep. can do right there? Yeah. I can't hear him. No, he's not muted. Let's go with this. Oh. I turned this off. Oh, it's going to be too loud. No. Okay, Aiden, is that big enough? Yeah. Okay, good. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. When you turn that off, turn that on, cranks the volume all the way down. Okay, so if I have a photon that has an energy of 20, and let's say that the ionization energy, so the ionization energy, the energy required to kick that electron out is 8. No? 
What do you want it to be in there, Nathan? Oh, I don't. I don't care. Well, you're shaking your head now. Never mind. I thought you were about to do it. What was I going to say? I don't want to sound stupid. So. No, it's okay. okay. You won't sound stupid. <laughs> I was just, I thought it had to be like an exact. Okay, so not a stupid question at all, because I've been saying up to this point that you need to have specific amounts of energy, right? Until you kick an electron out. So you're right to go from like the second energy level to the third energy level, that takes a very specific amount of energy. But if I were kicking the electron out, that minimum amount of energy must be met or anything greater. Not about class let this be a lesson please don't not ask the question okay i won't make fun of you and anybody else makes fun of you i'll take care of that all right now so if this is the amount of energy required to kick it out but this white had an energy of 20 what are we not accounting for we got we have an account for the kinetic energy. We have a law, law of conservation of energy. The amount of energy has to be constant, has to be, total, has to be the same. So if I have an energy of 20 from a photon coming in, and it takes eight to kick the electron out, we have 12 we haven't accounted for. And that would be the kinetic energy. So how fast is the electron moving? It's going to have an energy of 12 associated with that. Everybody okay with that? That's not too hard math, is it? Okay. Now, what happens if I change this to an energy of 30? I'm going to have 22 because we're not changing the amount of energy required to remove the electron. We're just changing the energy that's coming in to hit the electron. Could it ever be negative? Or like zero? No. Could be the kinetic energy, not negative. Oh, yeah. Technically, it could be zero because if if this were a photon of eight, it kicked the electron out, but the electron wouldn't have kinetic energy associated with it. More than likely, it would be probably re reabsorbed into the atom. I don't know. I don't have a good answer to that. I, I told you guys my promise to you, right? I'd never lie to you. So I'm not going to lie to you. I, I don't have a good answer for that. <clears throat> but if it was greater than eight, it's going to move away from yeah. with that kinetic energy. Can't be negative, though. What would happen? What would happen is, so if this were an energy of seven, okay, well, <laughs> the only way it would be able to interact with this atom, because it doesn't have enough energy to kick that electron out, it would pass on through, or it could cause, like, I'm only representing one electron. Let's say it had a whole bunch of electrons in it. It could make an electron in a lower energy jump up a higher energy level, but it's not going to kick it out. Okay. Okay, so next time you pick up this, that's tomorrow. So you guys are going to be on that thing, right? Okay, so tomorrow you guys are uh, period 9A or B. You guys are B group, right? You're A. Okay, I, I, I've got my letters back there. So tomorrow we, guys, we meet during lunch period. Okay, so that 1048 is going to be start time for you guys. We're done. Well, I mean, I guess we could all we could all eat lunch together online. If you want to. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess it, I would love that's up to you guys. Hey, thanks for showing up. <laughs>